Hi, my name is Dr. Sean Johnston. Today, we're going to talk about TMJ, temporomandibular joint dysfunction. That is a mouthful. So what is TMJ? A lot of people come into our clinic complaining of clenching in their teeth, clicking of their jaw, headaches caused from jaw pain. So it's a serious issue, and it's something that I think that we could attack and address in a little video. So what are some of the causes of TMJ? They're different for each person. There's many different manifestations of how TMJ can be caused. Here's a list of a couple. Misalignment or crooked teeth. Trauma to the teeth or jaw. Teeth grinding, otherwise known as bruxism. Poor posture. Stress or anxiety. Arthritis or inflammatory musculoskeletal disorders. And excessive gum chewing. Early signs and symptoms of TMJ differ from one patient to the other, but there are some commonly reported signs and symptoms that you can be looking out for. It all starts with the headaches. If you're having headaches and face pain, that's one good sign that you might be getting TMJ. Some others are clicking of the jaw or jaw and ear pain. The muscles of the jaw uh, are called the muscles of mastication. That means muscles that help you chew. If you're finding that those muscles that help you chew are tight and painful, that's another good sign that you might be on your way to TMJ. There are several risk factors that can increase your chance of developing TMJ or temporomandibular joint disease. I want to give you a list of several of them. The number one is poor posture. Poor posture can lead to TMJ by the tension that's placed on the jaw from the tight muscles of the neck. So if you're sitting all day long with an anterior head carriage or your head pushed forward, then those muscles are constantly pulling on that jaw and can make it to where that jaw doesn't sit in a good place. If that jaw is sitting a little outside of the joint, then over time it can develop into temporomandibular joint disease. Another factor, another risk factor, are people who are stressed out. If you're stressed out, it can cause tension on those muscles that we just got done talking about with poor posture. If those muscles are tight, again, it can pull on that jaw and to give you that TMJ. Women who are ages 18 to 44 show a high risk of developing TMJ. There's not much you can do about that, but that's another risk factor. And lastly is structure. Those who have dental problems or have had a injury to the jaw or just have crooked teeth or misaligned teeth, this is another factor or risk factor that can lead into to developing TMJ. In most cases, TMJ can be helped or even cured by using both conservative therapy in regards to physical therapy and some help with a dentist or an orthodontist, such as a flat plane splint with an orthodontist and some exercises and stretches with a conservative therapy physician, such as a chiropractor or a physical therapist. There are some cases that are so bad that they will need surgical intervention. So the exercise that I'm about to give you is the number one exercise for TMJ. It's a great exercise for strength of the muscles of the neck and the jaw. It's a very strange exercise. So it's a hard muscle group to actually work, uh, work out in a way that's not going to put a strain on the muscles that we're trying not to make tighter. You've seen a lot of the machines at these gyms where they're trying to work out the neck to where you're pushing your head forward or you're pushing your head backwards or to the side. And that really is a poor design. It's not a good exercise for the neck. But this exercise we're about to show you is, like I said, it's the best one, it's the most safe, but it also really loads those stabilizers of the neck and the jaw. So here it is. You start out in deep neck flexion. We've talked about deep neck flexion in many of our videos up to this point. And once you're in deep neck flexion, you're going to open up your jaw. Just open up. But the way that you open is going to be more of a back and down. A lot of people with TMJ, they want to open their jaw forward. So more of a, as opposed to a, so make sure the jaw is going back and down. Also, you're going to take your tongue, you're going to stick it about a centimeter behind your top two teeth, and you're going to press. 
about 20% of your strength. So Caitlin is pressing, and then you're going to open, you're going to load the neck, you're going to hold it, and you're going to close while still pushing. So what you're going to feel is a loading or a very big tightness in the neck, as you, especially whenever your jaw comes open. So continue to push your tongue as it opens and as it closes. Do that, hold it for five seconds whenever you get to the opening position, but do that about 10 times a day, and that will really start strengthening those deep neck flexors and stabilizers of the neck and the jaw.